Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's football show here on STV2. The main talking points on tonight's programme. Brendan Rodgers stands by his game plan for Celtic. Craig Levine has plan B at the ready for Tynecastle. Stephen Robinson says the underdogs can upset the odds in the League Cup semi-finals. Yeah, that's what we'll be talking about tonight and uh, other emerging stories from today. <coughs> uh, Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin, and I'm delighted to see our bootroom guest for this Thursday night show is Sterling Albion boss uh, Dave Mackay. And uh, I'm delighted he's here because on Saturday we're, we were getting really worried. It was 5-1, Ruffy, and we're thinking... Dave's just not coming in here. <laughs> He's out of the cup and he'll still be in a darkened room, Ruffy. I was worried, were you? Yeah, I think as the goals were getting in, we were getting a wee bit worried. But there was a wee bit of a comeback there uh, near the end, but uh, it wasn't to be... Yeah, absolutely. We're going to hopefully get an insight into uh, uh, whether there were teacups thrown inside the dressing room at the end of that game. But it's going well for Sterling Albion at the top of the league. We'll talk to Dave about his team. Um, but let's reflect on last night. Champions League uh, dominates the back pages of the newspapers. Here's the uh, daily record. Crying Munich reflecting on Bayern Munich's 3-0 win over Celtic. Uh, the Sun with uh, a similar look of dejection across the Celtic players. Eins vai fried is the headline in the sun and the Daily Mail has uh, a similar uh, picture of agony as uh, it confirms the 3-0 scoreline and also uh, the MPs calling for some of the uh, FA uh, to resign from their positions in England and uh, the Oppression Journal hoops will stick to the plan. This is of course referring to Brendan Rodgers' after-match interview which we will hear uh, very shortly. So to the game itself... Um, <clears throat> It was 3-0, it could have been 6 or 7. I would not have been surprised. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it was another pattern. Uh, again, you know, Craig Gordon had two or three saves. Very, very good saves at that. But I think, although we know that they're, they're streets ahead, uh, I think Brendan Rodgers will be disappointed at three goals. Uh, three goals that they lost were just bad, bad marking. Uh, all over the place at the second one. OK, Simonovic wasn't there. But uh, the rest of them were just, just diabolical, really, at defending. Yeah, it was a poor uh, first 45 minutes. And, and Dave, a lot of people have no sympathy in Scotland, especially in, in the Premiership, because this was a role reversal. This was Celtic getting a taste of their own medicine. Yeah, they're certainly not used to that. Obviously, they're the team that dictates and, and does that to other teams at and domestic level. But obviously, they had a bit of taste of their own medicine last night. And it's not nice, but I uh, expected a little bit more from them. It's, uh, they're playing against a team that are... Are levels above them, but I thought they felt a little bit more about them last night, but wasn't to be. Yeah, that, that surprised me, Ruffy. That was the one element of it. Regard, listen, you can talk about financial clout, the calibre of player they have at their disposal. I mean, was it down to maybe Brendan should have changed his tactics um, and looked at it and said, look, we're playing <coughs> against the former mm. Champions League winners. Um, they've got a new manager. They're off the back of a 5-0 win. They've got quality mm -hmm. there. Shut up shop, park the bus, try and ride it out. Well, as Dave says, it doesn't matter what team you're in, nobody likes getting hammered, uh, losing five goals. It was only three goals last night, but it was a backs to the wall for, for 80 minutes and uh, players put in a shift when that happens. So, yeah, it's OK if it just happens two or three times, but I mean, if it continues to happen, you know, and then you've got a problem because players are only natural, you know, they might be getting hammered during the week, but they've got their own Saturday game coming up, you know, and sometimes it's very difficult to get that out of your head, you know, that you've just been... Phew, thrown about like a rag doll and that's what it was but, uh, but certainly Celtic have proved that when they come back home again they can reshuffle and get it I, I, I just thought that they could have been better organised as I said the set pieces and that's why I'm saying I think that's where Brendan Rodgers will be disappointed Yep, yeah, um, although the manager is standing by the style he wants Celtic to play <clears throat> I'd rather lose a game I'd rather lose a game playing how we want to play and how we want to work as opposed to to sat in and defending for, for 90 minutes and still lose, if that's the case. So, um, so no, I think myself and my staff, you know, and the, the, the players, we had a plan going into the game. And uh, like I say, there was lots of positives for us in the game and, and something to look forward to for the, for, for the second game against them at Celtic Park. Well, I admire his resilience and confidence in the players, but the ball retention was poor. 
Christian Gamboa had a night to forget. I mean, if he's come out of a darkened room uh, right now, I'll be gobsmacked. Um, I, I just thought a lot of the players, I mean, even Kieran Tierney, a young man who'll have a tremendous learning curve from last night, Ruffy, he was giving the ball away regularly. Yeah, I think if you look back to even the Paris game, <laughs> when, when Celtic had retention of the ball, it was good. It was good to watch the passing. You know, the build-up and everything. I, I, don't, I don't get what Brendan's saying. They can take stuff out of that game last night. I, I thought... The passing was poor. I thought the movement was poor. I, I, don't, I think, obviously, <coughs> the players were a bit shell-shocked with what was happening around about them. I thought they, list, they lost all their shape, particularly at the back, and that's when they lost the, the goals. But So I think you've just got to move on. You know, if Celtic, Brendan Rodgers and Celtic have decided that they're a Europa Cup side, then we have to go with that. Yeah, well, if you weren't happy with the goals, uh, neither was the Celtic boss. Disappointed with the nature of the goals that we conceded. They were, um, they were poor goals from our perspective, but there was still a lot for us in the game. In particular, second half, how we, how we built the game from behind and, and, and tried, to, tried to play how we, how we would like to work in order to, to create our chances. So uh, there's no denying we're playing against a top-class side, um, but we feel that we could be better with the goals that we conceded. Well, when Celtic started to play in the second half, the game was gone, the horse had bolted. Um, the manner of the goals, Dave, you watched them earlier there. Um, you know, areas where some people would say, well, listen, you know, if, if they had the centre-half, they had the chance to, to buy a centre-half in the, in the summer transfer window. They didn't do that. Sometimes that can, you can get really found out when you go up the two or three levels. Yeah, it'll be, be frustrating for them to lose. The, the goals that they did concede were, were all preventable. It wasn't the Bayern were absolutely slicing them through the middle and creativity. They're getting into wide areas, crosses, and, and not actually dealing with the crosses. So that'll be disappointing for Brendan. But you can see why he's saying no, he wants to stick by his beliefs. It's It's been magnificent for him in the, the d domestic league. So he's obviously trying to carry that into Europe and he, he believes that's the way they should play. And I, I think it's good on him for trying that. But maybe sometimes you just have to look at the opposition, the level they're at and, and maybe try and adjust it accordingly but he trusts his players and maybe his players just didn't quite perform at that level last night Yeah, I, I also think uh, Ruffy, and this is where we'll <clears throat> hear from Brendan on, you know, where Celtic are and where Bayern Munich are we've got to be realistic about this you know, Dave's mentioned and, and Brendan Rodgers is standing by the style of play that he wants to play there's a learning curve, there's a learning curve in European football for them which these guys will soak it up. He will undoubtedly add to that squad as well. I mean, I've watched some really good sides. I watched a Sir Alex Ferguson Aberdeen side on the end of a real tanking from Liverpool in the early 80s and learn from it and then went on and won the Cup Winners Cup. I'm not suggesting for a minute Celtic are going to go on and win a European trophy, but there's a learning curve which we all have to accept as well. And I still go back to this. The remit for Celtic was the Europa League after Christmas. It hasn't mm -hmm. deviated from that. No, no and, and if, if that's acceptable to the Celtic fans, which I'm sure it is, that, that's fair dues. But I mean, it's, in years gone by, uh, Celtic were a force in, in the Champions League. You know, they were a force to get into the last 16. They were in groups. They you're, were talking about, you're talking about two, yeah, two no. out of the last, what, <clears throat> 10, yeah. 15 years, yeah. Ruffy? Yeah, that's but, not a force. Yeah, that's but, just a, a, you know, a, you know, a, a situation where it all comes right in an isolated mm -hmm. situation, it's not a, they're not a force. They're, they're there to get to the party, and then if they get to the last 16, mm -hmm. everybody's having parties and houses all across mm -hmm. Lanarkshire. So we're saying that that is gone completely. Absolutely, utterly. it's gone. Utterly well, gone. Well, that's up to the Celtic fans to get their head around there. That some of the Celtic fans I'm talking to say we could we could have better players. Yeah, which we ones could, are you talking we to? Could, no, they, 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 what they're saying... <laughs> are you saying, talking to people no, with a green no, scarf around their saying, head no, and the no. Celtic strip from 20 well, years ago? You, you touched on it briefly. They were just saying they could have, with the money that they brought in, keep talking about the money they brought in, which is a lot of money, Yeah, uh, could have brought in better players to be better in the Champions League, to obviously not beat these kind of teams, but come up against them better, put up a better show. I mean, yeah. you touched on the centre-half. The centre-half's been injured for February and nothing's been done. You know, and we all keep talking about a number 10. You know, there must be a number 10 out there who can get signed for 6 million, 7 million. I'm not saying it's going to make you qualify, you know. It's going to make you be better and better to compete against these teams. Yeah, here's uh, what Brendan Rodgers um, said about the reality <coughs> check on where Celtic are. You know, you, you, need, you need to be a realist as well. You need to respect who we're playing against and uh, 
Now, of course, we, we want to be competitive at this level, um, but you also have to measure the level and the quality that you're playing against. I think my players gave absolutely everything tonight. You know, this is a really honest group of, of men, you know, that domestically have been absolutely amazing to qualify for this competition. Um, like, I, like I said, is, is, is a huge ask for us. You know, progress for us is, is to, to be in Europe after Christmas. Uh, plain and simple, Europe after Christmas. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing with that. You know, I'm yeah. disagreeing with a lot of the stuff that he's saying before it. You know, because if, if Neil Lennon was to go into a press conference on Friday and say, we can't compete with them no more. You know, we'd all be sitting going, what? Well, that's well, a bit defeatist, that Neil, is it? No, can you not get in? You know, because he's going to, if he started comparing the money that Celtic's got, the money he's got, the players that Celtic have got to his, what's the point of turning up? <laughs> That's the point of me. Any manager is going to go out and give it their best shot. OK, <clears throat> you can give us uh, your thoughts on that. You can always tell when Ruffy's angry, he starts moving his hands and making gestures, you know. Um, OK, uh, we'll, have a, we'll have a quick break and see if we can uh, sort things out in the break. Dave Mackay still with us uh, and we'll look at last night's Champions League results elsewhere. Yeah, the level Bayern Munich are operating at when you win the Champions League, you get the bullet two or three days later. <laughs> You're no longer in a job, Ruffy. That's the level they're operating at. Even if you win the Bundesliga, you're not necessarily going to uh, stay in your position. No, I think if you come up against a German team, whether it's at club level or national level, you're always on a hard shift. And I remember Billy McNeil saying to me once, and we, I think we were playing Werner Bremen, and uh, it's just a, it's just the, the whole mindset, the physical... They're all physical guys and that, and uh, they're just really, really hard to beat. Yep, absolutely. Well, let's have a look at the uh, results from last night in the Champions League. And as you can see, Manchester United, well, they scraped it with uh, one goal and Jose Mourinho was forced to defend uh, their style of play for keeping a clean sheet. I can't believe they're arguing over a clean sheet these days. Uh, a year and a half, two years ago, they couldn't keep a clean sheet. Um, FC Basel with a good win in Moscow. Confirmation of the Celtic result and Paris Saint-Germain's 4-0 win over Anderlecht in Belgium suddenly gives them uh, Anderlecht a minus 10 goal difference. Uh, here's uh, Group C. Uh, couldn't separate Carabag and Atletico Madrid, which is a good result uh, for Carabag and, well, Chelsea Roma. I mean, Ed and Dzeko's volley in that match was simply sublime. Barcelona able to see off Olympiacos and Juventus edging it against Sporting Lisbon by two goals to one. Uh, so here's how Celtic's group looks. And uh, again, December 5th is always the date that every Celtic fan will be looking and relishing, which is, of course, the, the home game against Anderlecht. They're not going to lose four goals, Dave, are they? I wouldn't think so, no. They'll, they'll have more than enough to, to finish third in that group, which, as Brendan Rodgers has almost made clear, that that was our priority at the beginning, to make sure that European football after Christmas, and it looks as though they're going to manage that with a great result over in Belgium. Yeah, they've got back-to-back -back, you know, games against Bayern Munich. That one there, 3-0. Bayern Munich have to come to Celtic Park now. OK, I'm, curious, I'm really, it's intriguing to see which way they're going to set up with this one and whether the expectation from Celtic at home against Bayern Munich is suddenly they should be taking them or they should be getting a draw. I, it's difficult to call. I, I think Bayern Munich are more than capable of coming and winning and I dread to think what's going to happen to Celtic over in Paris. They've almost got nothing to lose now in the return uh, game against Bayern Munich. The... It looks as though third place is up for grabs and, and they might as well have a go at, at Bayern Munich when they come. It might sound silly after last night's performance and, and the quality that they've got attacking, but it's almost a free hit for them. So expect Celtic to be a lot better and the, the game to be a lot closer. Yeah, um, interesting point mm -hmm. there from uh, Dave because at home, you know, there are some special nights. Brendan Rodgers has produced them. They've witnessed them with previous managers, Gordon Strachan, Neil Lennon. Yeah, I mean, I've said I get shot down the last time when Paris came and I said there's been special nights, but uh, it never happened. <laughs> it was, <laughs> but, it was uh, a special night of your French. Yeah, it certainly was, Brad. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I know I just shut my eyes and think back to the Borussia game last year yeah. where, where they outplayed oh. Celtic. Uh, passing game, you know, and I'm sure Bayern are better than them. 
So I would expect the same. But uh, I would like Celtic to get a, a more positive result. And I think if they could maybe get a draw or something like that, you know, and, and move on to the obviously the Anderlecht game. But I just think the performance has to be better. I thought they were actually better in the Paris game and what they were in the gym. German game. Yeah. I mean, you might, I thought it was five goals and three goals, but I thought the passing game for Celtic and the Paris game was superb. Yeah. Up until the fourth goal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I'm even bothering with you on this one. Anyway, um, let's switch to uh, uh, again underdogs, albeit at a different level. Uh, semi-finals. You know what it's like to. You know what it's like to defy the odds, and then suddenly you've got a, a Scottish Cup winners medal in your pocket, Dave. Um, Motherwell um, against Rangers and Hibs against Celtic. You know, some people are already thinking, well, Motherwell and Hibs are there to make up the numbers. Certainly won't be the case and they won't feel that either. Hibs obviously went to Celtic Park a couple of weeks ago and put up a great performance, could could possibly have come away with the three points that day, so they'll be confident to get a result there. And and Murrowell as well against Rangers, that's that's a fifty fifty for me. It's Murrowell are, are vastly improved this year. They're a good team. I've seen them a couple of times. We played them pre season. they this year they've got real physicality about them as well. They've got pace in the team, they've got goals in the team with Louis Malt, so I expect that to be a, a really tough one and almost 50-50 in my eyes. Yeah, uh, and backing that up, Stephen Robinson, the Motherwell manager, says this is a much improved Motherwell side. Well, I've, I've heard coming out of them how much they've improved and so have we. You know, we're, we're in a very good run of form. We signed 17 players as well um, for not as much money, I would imagine. So we're improving all the time as well. We're gelling all the time and getting to know each other. So, yeah, both teams, I think, have improved from that first encounter. So it should be interesting. That's a great. I love reading into managers with those thinly veiled digs. We've signed seventeen players and probably for not as much money. <laughs> it's a yeah. great. It's a great way of saying. By the way, here's the level, but we're still competing with them. Yeah. Motherwell will be loving the fact though, that they are seen as the underdogs. They'll, they'll be using that to their advantage. All the pressure will be on Rangers. You know what the fans demand from a club that size and the fan base and, and everything else that goes along with it. So again, Motherwell will go into that way with confidence, but knowing. Just taking a bit of heart from the fact that they probably are underdogs, people writing them off. We had the same when we got to the final against Aberdeen. We had a horrific record against them. Aberdeen were flying at the time. They, they already had a League Cup under their, their belt. So, yeah, we, we used to enjoy that sort of tag as well. I'm sure Marowell will be right up for that and fancy their chances. Yeah, I, I don't know if you've done it yet, but did Tommy Wright at any point just put the newspaper up on the wall and say, have a look at this? Because it's a classic, it's a classic role for many a manager. I've not really encountered it. To be honest, you, people have mentioned stuff that I've been in. I've never actually seen the clippings up on the boards. But yeah, you'll certainly be using stuff that uh, has been said in the build-up. And I know Tommy done it against Jackie McNamara in the lead-up to the final. Um, a, a little bit of mind games which seemed to work and basically telling Jackie he knew what his team would be, players he would drop, and he was spot on and <laughs> they came out with the team. So um, managers are always at it and you expect nothing less in the build-up to such big games. Yeah, and Stephen Robinson says, uh, right, mother will off at your peril. There's definitely no fear factor from us. According to everybody else, I think people have already got it a, an old firm final. So um, we're out right to prove that wrong. I've seen some clips and, and tickets for sale for Rangers in the final. So people have obviously wrote us off already. That's fine. We can deal with that. But within our dressing room, within our, our club, you know, we firmly believe that we can get a result. OK, give us your prediction then, Dave, for um, Motherwell against Rangers on the Sunday. I think it's a game that will go to extra time. I think it's going to be that close between them, but I don't know, I've just got a wee sneaky feeling for Motherwell. I think this this could be a time that, as I said before, they're really improving. And, and when I have seen them, which isn't an awful lot, I've seen them two or three times this season and they've, they've impressed me with the, the pace I've got in the team and they look solid enough defensively. They're, they're playing a different formation and seems to suit them. So I think Motherwell could, could be the one that upsets it. Yeah, I think it's on the day. You know, both sides have got players who are match winners and Mother will get into the game with confidence. I think if you get into a semi final you want to go into it on a good run and they'll go there buoyant. You know, I think I've already touched on the amount of Rangers supporters that are going to the game could be a big factor for the Rangers players if they're winning. If they're not winning, you know, obviously then you've got 
players who haven't been there before, you know, they have to react to the support not being right behind them. But I, I'm, I agree with Dave. I think it'll be really, really close. But I think Rangers might just nick it by the odd goal. Yeah. Is there a bonus for uh, Neil Lennon that Celtic are coming back from Germany? They'll have been running non-stop in that game. A lot of them will be tired. And suddenly you've got to lift yourself again for a game in the semi-finals at, at a quarter past 12 kick-off on the Saturday. I'm sure it is a slight advantage for Hibs. It's it's maybe a little bit of a leveller, but um, Hibs Hibs have got players that have got real quality. Players that have played at that level, like say McGinn, who's who's on fire at the minute. Anthony Stokes, who's who's won the cup of the Scottish Cup a couple of years ago with Hibs, and he's won stuff with Celtic as well. So they've got players of real quality. They're internationalists throughout the squad now. So. They'll fancy their chances as well of causing an upset and it's, it'll be interesting to see how Celtic do react after after the game in Munich during the week there. So it'll be an early kick-off as well. So it's, it's starting to play slightly into Hibs' hands. But when you look at Celtic's record domestically over over the last 18 months or so, it's incredible and you can never write Celtic off. I'm sure they'll bounce back. It's just a, a little blip, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, I mean, I was hanging on your every word there, Dave, because I thought to myself, if Dave Mackay is tipping Motherwell and Hibs here, it's a, fa <laughs> it's a fantastic line. Um, no, I, I fancy Hibs. Yeah, sorry, I fancy, <laughs> I fancy Celtic just to see that one out, but I'm sure that'll be a close one as well. Yeah, maybe a 2-1 or something like that, but I'm sure it'll be a close game, but Celtic just to edge it. Just, they've got that extra bit of quality and in this country compared to the rest of the team so I think I would just edge it over Hibs Yeah well if Dave mentioned that Ruffy you know Tommy Wright knew the game plan of Jackie McNamara Neil Lennon's not going to be foxed under <coughs> any circumstances <coughs> with this one No I think it's all about Hibs you know I think if the right Hibs team turn up and defensively uh, they're solid uh, they've got good players back there you know but they have been losing soft goals I think that's the main thing that's been upsetting Neil uh, but yeah, I, I think Brendan Rodgers has already been on record and saying I don't know why our game isn't Sunday rather than Saturday, yeah. you know, an extra day. So yeah, I think they'll have to look at all the players, see who's recovered quicker than the others. And But he's got that many players to pick from. And just briefly, uh, Alan Stubbs says he reckons John McGinn is an, an ideal replacement for Scott Brown, maybe for club and country. Mm -hmm. Is this the perfect platform for John McGinn to go and show what level he's at? Yeah, I think every high-profile game he goes into. You know, I, I would like to think he's going to get a chance to play for Scotland against Holland. You know, it'll be another game. You know, and I think these young players need to start playing games at high, a higher level so we can see what they can do. OK, coming up after the break, um, well, we're going to talk about another young, talented player at Aberdeen uh, that signed a contract extension. Derek McInnes is a happy Don's boss. We will look to a man who's under a fair bit of pressure. We'll be following Partick Thistle's exploits in the uh, Premiership at the weekend. And we're also going to talk about Sterling Albion riding high at the top of the league. But there's a bit of pain for Dave Mackay to discuss, and it is, um, well, a defeat in the Cup. How is he going to explain it away to us? You can find out next. Nice little goal from Angel Di Maria last night in Paris Saint-Germain's 4-0 win over Anderlecht. It's uh, hard to believe uh, they get rid of him at <coughs> Manchester United. Just didn't seem Never to fit worked, into the way yeah. Van Hal wanted them to play. Yeah, and he's a quality player. I don't know if you noticed last night, he didn't have much celebration at his goal, did he? He didn't have like mm. as if he... Well, he wasn't the yeah. same as the rest of them, you know, jumping about as if he was just... Maybe he's like Chick Chanley, he's just realised that there's another move on the horizon, right. so I'll, I'll start to sulk about <laughs> yeah. and then get another yeah. signing yeah. on fee. Yeah, well, I wish uh, I hadn't scored there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, listen, talking about trying to build things, um, great news for, for, for Aberdeen, they've managed to get Scott McKenna on an extension to 2021 as well. You know, he could be one of those players we are talking about, Dave. We're crying out for, you know, central defenders, defenders of real quality. Maybe he's the man. Derek McInnes has been glowing in his praise of him. Yeah, it could be. It could be. Hopefully it is, because you say if there is a weak area, a slight weak area in this, the national team, it is cent centre defence. It used to be a, a strength of ours 10, 15 years ago, and now... Seems to be a bit of Achilles' heel, but it's great to see young guys like coming through. And, and if Derek shows shows faith in them, he must be some player. And 
I've heard good things about him, so hopefully he starts to flourish and make himself a regular in the Aberdeen team first. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm loathed at times to heap, you know, too much praise on players because sometimes, Ruffy, you know, they fall short when they <coughs> try and get to that next level. And we, I, I think there's two or three there that mm. might just come through in the next couple of years for us. Yeah, but you, you've got to be given the chance. Dave will tell you, there's no point in just playing five games a season and then they take you out and then you're back in again. You've got to start again. The more games you get under your belt, the more confident you get, the more experience you get. And, and no doubt, I don't know, is he in the under-21 side? Yes. Yeah, well, there you go. You know, you're, you're looking at the under-21 side. You're looking at them, obviously, they're coming up against Holland and they're coming up against England and the players they're up against. And every time they come up against somebody for Arsenal or Man City, it can only be good for the club when they go back to the club and they, they get that confidence. So, yeah, I think maybe they're still maybe a year or two away from the full squad, but certainly they're in the right direction. Yep. Um, another little bit of interesting news from uh, Hans, mm. uh, Ruffy, is Craig Levine saying they've got a plan B in preparation if they don't make it for November 5th. I mean, the the, the building of Tyne Castle, uh, the, the, the main stand is going at a fast pace. Maybe not... Mm fast enough for uh, the owner and Budge but uh, I mean it's starting to look the part I think it's going to look sensational in there I'm just praying the press box it's bigger mm -hmm. roughly you know mm -hmm. being a bit selfish but I just think it's got the makings of a fantastic stadium it was before that yeah it's fantastic the, the, the owners of the club have, have earmarked that that is a big big thing for the club moving forward and I've always said that you know when you're trying to attract uh, better players if you bring them to a wonderful stadium or a wonderful training ground you know, it does open their eyes at the whole year. I'm being asked to sign for a quality club here and sometimes it makes it a wee bit easier to get that player maybe you didn't think you could get. Yeah, did you thrive in a Tyne Castle atmosphere, Dave? Just to love it. It used to be one of my favourite places to play. Just the, the atmosphere that can get created in there when it's going well. And probably one of the best atmospheres i ever played in was a League Cup defeat. We played Aberdeen there and Aberdeen had the three sides, we only had the one. And, they comfortably beat us that day, but the atmosphere that they created, Aberdeen fans, they scored in the first minute, which helped, but it was incredible, the noise in there, and the pitch is right on top of you, you're taking throw-ins, the fans are literally yeah. about a yard away from you, almost touch you, it's, it's just a, can be an intimidating place as well for opposition, I'm sure Hearts will use that to the advantage again once they, they get back there. Yeah, a number of players will say, Ruffy, that they don't hear uh, the crowd, but I, I, I like Tyne Castle because it's the, one of those places where even for a throw-in you get leathered and pelted from the side as well. It's just fantastic, mm -hmm. as Dave said. And if you're having a howler, <laughs> it's the worst place to have one. Yeah, you've got to be focused on what you're doing on the park. Yeah, you hear the noise round about you, but uh, the more people are there, believe it or not, there's a less of individual voices you hear. It's the individual mm -hmm. ones when you go away somewhere and there's only two men and a dog and the one guy just keeps on at you all the time and he's the only guy you can hear it's, uh, you've got to deal with it but no, it'll be a fantastic place to go and play Yep, uh, one other little note before we move on to Partick Thistle Alan Burrows, the general manager of Motherwell said that he reckons that payout from UEFA uh, could have saved a couple of clubs um, from insolvency or, or some clubs mm -hmm. from insolvency and yeah, just, yeah, I think there's obviously a lot of clubs just uh, on, on a level you know, either going up the way or down the way, and, and certainly that kind of money coming in would be a breath of fresh air to, I'm saying, not just the Premier clubs, but the clubs down the divisions, because that kind of money, I know it's not the same amount as it goes down the way, but uh, it can mean when January comes, two players you can maybe go and sign, and they two players might be the one that takes you up another division. So it's really, really important. Yeah, OK. Um, managers under pressure. It's something that you'll undoubtedly experience as life goes on and you start to climb the managerial uh, ladder, Dave. Alan Archibald is one of the most respected in the game. They're under a bit of pressure at the moment, Partick Thistle. They've got to battle their way out of it and they've got three big games starting with Dundee at the weekend. Yeah, as it's, it's getting to that stage now where they're just desperate for a win. But I think if anybody's earned the, the right to get a little bit longer than, than some others, it's like say, Alan Archibald in there, the job that he's done at Thistle, stabilising them in the, the Premier Division and, and finishing sixth last year as well, which they'd always tried to do for, for a number of years, narrowly missed out the year before. I think it was in goal difference. So there's always been a progression there. And even last year, they had a really slow start and they com came on with a great run. So I'm sure all it takes sometimes is one one result going their way and, and getting results. But you see the way it is with chairman at the minute. It's, it seems to be the fashion. It's, it's coming up from down south and the continent as well that a couple of bad results and you're out of a job. So 
he'll know that he needs a result himself quickly and I'm sure that they'll get that sooner rather than later. Mm, well, if you want to tap into what the fans think about it, I caught up with uh, a Jags fan earlier, Raymond Stark, to get his thoughts on um, the manager's position and the team. I think given the starts, Peter, we've uh, made over the last couple of seasons, uh, we're kind of used to being in this position, unfortunately, but, but we were looking very much to make October a good month and it hasn't started well. Mm. Uh, are the fans at the point where they are starting to look to the manager and ask questions or do you think they are of the same attitude, hopefully, as the board and keeping faith with them? I think there is a certain element of the fact that support are very concerned and, and I think we're all concerned, but we have been in this position before and with not just the, the first team, but the whole big picture as well. He's very much involved with the, the new academy, the, the new training complex um, as well. And I think the board are, are, are smart and sensible enough not to press them. Yeah, with that in mind, uh, Raymond, just one win in 10 games. Um, Alan Archibald is quick to point out you've had a lot of injuries, but sometimes that message doesn't quite get across or, you know, they don't accommodate that type of thing that the manager has to put up with. Yeah, Peter, um, eight first teamers fairly, fairly much out injured, um, crucially uh, in the, the full-back, wing-back areas and also in the centre of the park. Um, having said that, I think the manager as well within the site and the fans themselves to expect those that have come in to step up to the mark and in the last two performances, that has certainly not been the case. Well, I've got to ask you this, it's, it's Dundee, it's such a huge game. And then, I, you know, I'm looking, I'm thinking to myself, OK, Dundee, Hamilton, St Johnston before Rangers. Three games where I think even Alan Archibald will be looking and thinking, we've got to get points from somewhere. The good thing is you're not detached at the bottom of the table just yet. Not just now, Peter, we're not, um, but it does become a concern the longer this we get from along, as you say, um, and the next to Dundee and Hamilton, um, teams around that kind of area battling, um, you know, are, are very, very crucial and definitely wins are needed um, to stop us becoming detached. Um, November is a horrible month for Thistle because the three games uh, away to Parkhead, away at Tyne Castle and away at Ibrox. So hence the reason there was a lot made of October being a big month. And as I say, we expected a reaction from the players on Saturday against Kilmarnock after the Motherwell game. They certainly want everybody here at Fun Hill. Two questions to finish, Raymond. Um, I mentioned those three games. Do they make or break the manager? Not entirely sure, um, Peter, whether they make or break them, but I think what it does is it shapes our season, that's for certain, in which end of the table we're going to be involved at. And the last point, it's Dundee. How do you see it going? Very, very, I think it'll be a tight game. Dundee have impressed me at times um, throughout the season. They've been very in and out. Neil McCann um, will be looking for consistency. From our point of view, the games are, you know, the next three games are, are crucial in regards to picking up points so we don't become detached at the bottom of the league. And I fancy Thistle might just finally get that first one of the season, maybe by a couple of goals to nil this Saturday, hopefully. Well, uh, there's a party <clears throat> Thistle fan and Raymond Stark. Still optimistic, Dave, but these three games are crucial because the next four are a nightmare for them. Yeah, when I, when I just mentioned the fixtures that they've got away from home, Celtic, Hearts and Rangers coming up in November, then it puts even more importance on the next three games against Dundee, Hamilton and St Johnston. Certainly not easy games. Dundee are picking up. Hamilton are fighting for their lives as they do. They had a good start and stumbled a little bit recently. And St Johnston will always pick up results and, and wins. So it's, it's a massive three games for them. Yeah, and, and injuries. Fans don't wear that, Ruffy. They just want the wins. No, they want the wins. Uh, and, and, and Alan and the players will know that as well. <coughs> I think they'll be focused and uh, that is what the, is going to happen at the weekend. And it's amazing. We saw Kilmarnock getting a win, uh, one win last week and everything becomes cheery. Uh, and that's what happens if you get a win, particularly at home. You send everybody away happy. But I, I agree that as long as there isn't a gap there that can't be caught, then uh, Alan should still be there.
Yep. Okay. Um, that's a good, sensible party thistle board. I hope I haven't said that. And then four or five days from now, we're talking about thistle looking for a new manager. Um, so it's Partick Thistle against Dundee. It'll be one of our main games on Saturday. Uh, after the break, it's all roads lead to Stirling Albion and this man, Dave Mackay. I think you had to be a real died in the wool Motherwell fan to nail that one, Ruffy. I didn't, didn't expect you or yeah. Dave to get that one. No, nowhere near that one. No, just absolutely not. a Welsh name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You <laughs> were just going through a few of them. Um, Dave, it's great to have you in the studio. Luckily, <clears> as we've watched you from player and now into management um, on the programme. It must have been emotional. Last week we were thinking about you with regards to the testimonial. That must have been a great night, seeing old friends, people paying tribute to you at St Johnson, uh, and of course a game against Dundee. Yeah, it was enjoyable. It get, obviously, it was my first club in professional football, a team that gave me the, the opportunity to play, so grateful to them and Neil McCann and Graham Gatland and the, the Dundee owners for allowing it to happen and obviously St Johnston for, for giving us that, that chance to, to have a testimonial year in the first place. So it was a really good night, enjoyed it, family had a great time which is, which is obviously important. Yeah, and, and the great thing about having two kids, one at 15 means that she really doesn't care about your special night and the wee man does. <laughs> yeah, he was loving it, he was loving being the centre of attention. It was more, I enjoyed it because I seen how much he enjoyed that night. He was loving the, the attention that he got. Louise has been there through when I was a player anyway. She yeah. had been at games, never really interested anyway, but Callum never got the chance to see me play really. He was probably about two when I retired, so he's never... He wouldn't remember me playing, so yeah. probably a good thing for him. Some of my performances towards the end, mind you, but it was great for him to be to be there and see be a part of that night as well. Well, to be fair, I mean, he'll probably be growing up and people will, will you know, still call you by your nickname, Cup Time Mackay. We've got a nickname. Of, if your boy ever comes in here, we just call you 8 out of 10. Because <laughs> that's what we gave you every time we went to a game, um, which is not a bad thing, Ruffy. 8 out of 10 is good. A fantastic scoreline and uh, consistency was a part of his game. And I think... Uh, that's why there are any St Johnson players we have in, you know, every time we talk about them, that's the, that's what it was. It was all about the week in, week out, consistent performances. Yep, um, lots of uh, great compliments as well. I thought the best one was uh, from uh, uh, your central defensive partner, um, Stevie Anderson, saying he felt as if you were one of those uh, great unsung heroes that should have had a Scotland cap. That would have just that would have made it just special. You know, that, playing for your country. That would have been incredible, obviously. That's what you dream about as a young boy to, to play for your country. But in the flip side, I kind of knew I was never quite good enough to play there. I was, for a start, to play at that level, you need to have a bit of pace, especially if you're a full back. And I just never quite had a, enough pace to play at that level. So, certainly, when you look back with any regrets or whatever, I, it's not that I ever expected to be called up or anything like that. I think it was maybe close once to getting a call up for, for cover, but it never quite happened. And, just got on with it and enjoyed my enjoyed my time playing football. I, you obviously miss the playing side of it, but it's great to still be involved now in, in management. Yeah, uh, I'm going to talk about your management a little bit in just a couple of seconds, but see when people talk about the fact that you, you never made it international level, just open that Scottish Cup medal <laughs> and have a wee look at it. That's fantastic, isn't it? What was the banter like with the boys? Because <clears throat> this is a bond that will be there forever. Yeah, definitely. It's something I'm sure the, the club will rip the back out. Yeah, it'll be every year, every five years, then it'll be ten years and it'll be great to get all the guys back together. It's guys that you've played together. It wasn't just that we, we threw the team together one year and it, it worked out. That was a progression over many years, five, six, seven years guys had been together and to go and do it with proper mates and, and guys that you're, you're really close to means even more. Yeah, Have you watched the game since? I've seen highlights of the game. I've never watched the full game back. Yeah. I've never really won for watching own performances back or anything like that. But I've seen the highlights. I think it was in holiday and I watched it in Cyprus. It came on for some reason on, on the TV. So that's really the only time I've watched it. Yeah, absolutely. What do you make of St Johnston now? Um, Tommy has mentioned that defensive mistakes are costing them at the moment. But he still manages to defy the odds year in, year out. I do. It's, They'll be up there top six again, I'm sure, this year. They did a fantastic start to the campaign. I've had a couple of little setbacks recently, the, the Rangers game and Dundee game, but 
they're, they're always a team that you know and when everybody writes them off that's when they're at their best they'll, they'll certainly pick up enough points to be well clear of safety for a start and I'm sure they'll, they'll be making top six or place again they have done the last five or six years and they'll be, every year they, they, they seem to progress they, they get rid of one or two players or older players myself, Fraser Wright move on other guys, Steve McLean they're not going to be about forever but they yeah. always seem to replace these guys and, and never look out of place We, we always keep a, an eye on what you're doing Management now, Sterling Albion. Um, was it? How, how did it feel for you in those days when suddenly you're making the decisions? It came about a lot quicker than I ever anticipated. I was coaching at St Johnston under twenties after a, a quit. I was going in there just um, to get experience and, and working with them. It was fantastic. I, I really enjoyed my my time up there. <coughs> Alec Cleland, Callum Davis, and Tommy were great with me, allowing me to take the team and and basically do what I wanted at training and take team talks and stuff and doing that just gave me the feeling that I want to be my own man rather than go through the coaching uh, side of the game I wanted to go and just try and try and be my own man and, and be a manager more and right and thankfully Sterling gave me that opportunity Yeah, uh, do you hear echoes of old managers when you're shouting at them or instructing them or anything like that? I suppose some things you're, you're going to pick things up and there's no doubt about it from, from past ones and obviously Tom Wright because he's my ro most recent one that you pick up some things but aye, there's some things you shout at the side of the pitch you're not too, <laughs> not too proud of it after the game or whatever you go home thinking about it but in this role it's, as a player you go home you get beat you're devastated but you can switch off you go back in Monday you're training here you're, you literally wake up during the night thinking about football and it's incredible how much it consumes you. I think when we had Barry on, when Barry was at Clyde, he says the, the hard, one of the hardest things he had to deal with was obviously becoming full, from full-time football into the, the part-time side was he just didn't have enough time with the players. You know, yeah. just one night on a Tuesday, wasn't mm -hmm. he enough time to sort of like regroup yeah. them or have a chat to them and then don't see them again that, that was the thing that you just wanted them all the time yeah that, that is the most difficult but if you're at a full time club and obviously you can work in double sessions whatever you want you can have them five days a week if you want or most clubs will be four days but to have just the two nights and you have to fit into that your fitness your try and get a bit of tactics into them but most importantly you need to make sure the guys are fit and ticking over and you don't get as much time to work on shape work in preparation you you've got two hours on a pitch or whatever to, to get that work done and, and that's the most difficult part. You want to try and stay there. You would stay longer, no problem, and, and help the players. But yeah. you also have to understand these guys are coming from work. They've been out for six in the morning or whatever. They're doing a, a real hard day shift and they come in and the, the attitude's absolutely brilliant to the guys. I've got a real, it's been a real eye-opener how much, how, how much I respect these guys for, for what they do from playing professional football all the time. You don't see that side of the game and... It's, it's a great attitude the, the guys have got. But you seem to have a good bunch because, you know, six wins out of eight, you've only had one defeat. Yeah, we've been fantastic in the league. We've, we've had a couple of little performances which haven't been great, but we've managed to get results from them. But, yeah, couldn't, couldn't have asked for much more to, to start the season. Saturday was a huge, huge blip for us um, going out of the Scottish Cup. We, we were woeful that day. The, the performance was nowhere near good enough. Lothian and Thistle were fantastic. Um, take nothing away from them. Thoroughly deserved their win could have and should have been more and we just have to make sure that that doesn't affect us in the league and we go to Cowdenbeath on Saturday and hopefully get back on track. Yeah, I mean, look at the league table um, and, and I see clubs hovering around you. I mean, is it too much to expect? Is your ambition to win that? You've got a little cushion between yourself and Stenhouse Muir, albeit it's early in the season. I think everybody's ambition, top... Probably top five there will have realistic ambitions. Our top six, Elgin as well, I'm sure they'll come good. I'll all think they've got a real chance of winning it. And we're no different. At the beginning of the season, that was my target. I want to win the league. Yeah. Playoffs minimum. I, th I think we've, we've got a, they certainly got a good enough squad to do that and, and achieve that. And we've, we've given ourselves a great chance with the start we've had. Yeah. Where's the biggest threat coming from in your mind? It's a tough one. Stenhouse Muir are a good side. I've seen them a couple of times and they're organised. They don't concede many goals and compared to us anyway, we seem to, we score plenty of goals but we're conceding far too many. Peter Head have got the, the money in our league to go and, and sign players. They've probably got double the budget that anybody else in our league has and I think they two will certainly be up there. The two that come down from League One last year and, and they'll be up there challenging. But Montrose as well last year, Stuart Petrie done an amazing job with them. Getting them into the playoffs last year just fell a little bit short. So... They're another one that will be up there challenging. Yeah, and you're Peter McDonald, he's 54 now, still playing. <laughs> um, he's, he's magnificent, isn't he? But how good is it to have experience like that there? 
think it is. We've got a young squad, a, a lot of them are 20, 21, 22 year old, so slightly inexperienced, but we've got likes of Peter McDonald, Darren Smith, guys like that who are vital to, to, to bring the best out in these. And Peter's, I think he's only scored three goals for us this season. Um, considering the amount we've scored isn't very much, but the amount he's created and the problems he causes um, uh, defences is, is vital for us and he's he's been a huge part of the success we've had so far. Yeah, well, listen, we, we, as ever, I'm delighted that you come on the programme, Dave. Um, uh, great to talk about the, the memories of St John's, but more importantly now, um, we hope you go on to, uh, you know, great success with uh, Sterling. We just keep you as a contact in case you move on to Man United and Real Madrid. We've got to keep him, got to keep him in tow. Robbie, it's as simple as that. Just out of curiosity, did you blast the players on Saturday with your teacup thrower? I've had a few, but no, no, so much teacup thrower. But you, you go mental in the dressing room. But Saturday wasn't really a time for it. I think the players knew how bad we were. It was a, it was a shocking performance. So of course you're going to have a go at them, but there's only so much you can say. You don't want to absolutely slaughter them, get through them and their confidence is rock bottom. So it's important that we build them up Tuesday. We, we get a really good session into them. We'll have an hour one tonight and make sure we're ready for Cowdenbeath and try and forget that that whole episode. It's, it'll always be the back of our minds, of course, the hurt that we had from it, but we need to make sure we move on now and try and concentrate in the league. Yeah, well, we wish you well. And, of course, uh, it's top against bottom, Sterling Alwyn against Cowdenbeath. If you don't uh, win against Cowdenbeath, then uh, Ruffy will be on t on Monday actually slaughtering you. It's all about <laughs> levels with Ruffy. You know, I mean, Cowdenbeath will go there, you know, with not a lot to play for and they might have a go. <laughs> and uh, Ruffy will absolutely leave Dave Mackay without a name, by the way, because he started off the programme like that. He might as well finish like it as well. Uh, good luck to Dave at Sterling Albion. It's been an absolute joy chatting to him. Uh, join us tomorrow on the programme. Hugh McDonald will join us as we look ahead to the weekend semi-finals and, of course, some of the domestic football in the leagues. Good night.